Welcome back to the Wrong Advice Podcast. I'm your host, John Picciuto, and I'm very excited to have Gino Battiston on the line with us today. Gino, how are you doing, my friend? Excellent, John. Thanks for inviting me. Pleasure to be here in your podcast. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. Can you uh, give us a quick introduction to who you are, Gino? Of course, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm well, I'm Argentinian. I've been like, you know, traveling lots of countries in Latin America. My father is from Ecuador. Uh, one of my father, my father, my mother is actually from Ecuador and my father is Argentinian. So I have a pretty good mixture between many countries around Latin America. I've been traveling lots of countries, you know, documenting and all that. And well, I'm a filmmaker, also a film photographer. Been working on the film making industry for 30 years or so. And and well, that's that's my insight right here. <laughs> when did you start? Like, I guess when did you first pick up a camera? Beautiful. That's an ex- <laughs> extraordinary situation because I was eight years old. That's wow. somewhere. Yeah, somewhere 1989, and we were traveling actually with a painter, a famous painter from Argentina. His name was Orlando Pardo. He, we were traveling for an exhibition on Ecuador, and I was handing that tiny cameras of one and 110 millimeters. The, the, the shorter ones and tiny ones with that little negatives. Mm-hmm. And suddenly when we were traveling, you know, uh, some rainbows came up between, you know, the mountains and I was just clicking and clicking and clicking. And that was a beautiful result. I got in love with this thing of, you know, capturing time and moments. It's, it's, it was a beautiful situation, really. That's amazing. I, I mean, so like I, I tell the story a lot. I, I came to photography much later in life. Um, but like for someone like you that it's been sort of uh, ingrained at you from such a young age, I, I I'm almost have like this feeling of jealousy um, that you're able to like find the thing that you love at such a such a young age. Um, obviously, fast forward, uh, you know, 25 plus years, explain to me sort of like the path that your life took. Like you obviously knew at a young age that you loved to take photos and, and f- make films. Um, but what was that process like for you growing up in Argentina? And, uh, and sort of like what made you into the uh, photographer and documentarian that you are today? Beautiful question. Yeah, it was a pretty tough thing to decide, you know, because in Latin America, it's pretty hard. Your parents are always telling you, you know, you know don't be an artist, don't <laughs> get into that. You're going to be poor or whatever, you know, my guess is everywhere is likely. But, uh, you know, when I was 18, I was reading pretty lots of, of you know books around philosophy, Bergson's ones, Gilles Deleuze, Leibniz, things about you know the virtual aspect of reality, you know, not just the tangible things, but into metaphysicals in philosophy. So my guess was okay, art is gonna be a path around these two you undercover or discover what's behind what we touch see and hear and it was a long path really because i had to work a lot really on the film industry from sunday to sunday it was a pretty hard time but i managed to to you know get along with my artistic needs in parallel So, yes, it was hard, but it was beautiful. I got into some exhibitions internationally and then that went pretty well. So I was encouraged to continue, of course. Thanks for that. Hmm. So I've found that as my career sort of uh, has evolved from a photographer, I just recorded my very first music video for a band this weekend. It seems like sort of a natural progression for a photographer to sort of develop that videography, cinematography uh, aspect of their art. What was that transition like for you in that process of like incorporating a new sort of uh, tool to your arsenal? And do you have a preference, uh, whether it is filmmaking or photography? 
Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Well, in fact, it, um, yeah, it was like in this search, um, you know, um, I, I came along with drama. I started for five years in in a team of actors and directors here in Mendoza because we don't have any filmmaking, you know, schools here. So I did. I do. I I, I had to, you know, um, search along with the, the individual aspects of what cinematography means, you know. So I started drama for f five years and something exploded in my mind around the possibility. So I started to lurk to at the, you know, the old Nouvelle Vague um, uh, things and neorealism things from Italy and Europe in the 60s, 70s. And I got in love with that kind of filmmaking, you know, where you don't have any scripts. You are just experimenting with actors, experimenting with light at the same time. And, you know, the stories aren't there, really. You have to just uh, try to evoke things from what you are searching. And that unexpected aspect of filmmaking is what got me into that really so i didn't you know forgot uh, about photography because i'm pretty in love with film photography and the process and all that because it really trains your intuition i'm about that i'm about trying to feel things more than think things at on art at least you know mm -hmm. so filmmaking was that opportunity to, you know, experiment more and, and, you know, try to search what's behind things. And, and that's why, but I don't have any preference really between them. It's just, I'm stepping forward and trying to do both and both really need them. You know, it's like uh, photography, of course, and film, it's like, for me, it's like the same thing. Because it, if it, photography doesn't move or, or whatever, doesn't mean anything for me, really. You can capture many things from a photography, even the movement that was there. So for me, both are like just one arm and the other. It's not yeah, one go. or the other, really. Yeah, yeah. they go hand in hand. Um, that's yeah. cool. It's you. You. Uh, you've struck me as a person who's like immensely comfortable in their art making ability. Um, I, for a long time, have felt as if I don't belong. Right. Like it's very easy to be struck with imposter syndrome and self doubt. Exactly. Um, you've obviously had a, a lengthy career. I'm curious how those types of feelings have, you know, either positively or negatively impacted your ability to uh, to make art. Exactly. Great questions you have, John, there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because many artists, you know, um, well, there are so many good artists in this crazy world. You can, you know, find lots of things. So it's not about being good or bad, really. It's about a way of living to myself. It's, mm. I think it like, well, I just decided to, to do this mainly because I don't feel very comfortable with the system, in fact, you know, like that kind of, uh, you know, being a, a, a voluntary slave in this world, working from nine to five, running and, you know, running cars and burning oil and all that thing. And to me, art, it's like a resistance. It's like, you know, I don't want this. I don't want to break this world with my time and be, you know, that obsessive around life. And so my guess is that art could be and should be somehow anonymous. Mm. It's, like, it's like an intimate relationship with existence. And, and that's enough, you know. Of course, you have to live and you have to have some money to, to go on. But I, I'm even thinking and I'm, I'm pretty off the grid right now. So my, my life is pretty minimalistic. 
I do have whatever I need to to live, but I don't have too much expectations around having things, looking for things, or having more money, or even be being famous. You know, um, I, I've been running from being famous a lot. I got <laughs> the chance to to do it, you know, and talk about myself and put myself uh, on you know many exhibitions around the world, and I've done that. But, you know, I'm not that kind of obsessive around social media. I'm just trying to do art yeah. and, and keep it going. That's all. Yeah, I find that very interesting because um, I feel a similar way. Um, like, obviously, I want to earn enough money to survive and live and pay my bills. Um, yeah. But the materialistic aspect of life is not that um, enticing to me as it was, say, in my 20s. Right. In my 20s. 95% of what I was doing with my life was based on getting more stuff, right? And I think there was like a, uh, a shift in myself sometime after like my 30th birthday or, you know, my early 30s, uh, I'm 36, where mm -hmm. those things stop mattering, right? It, it, it's not any more about getting another thing. It's more about life and its experiences and what it has to teach me. Um, which mm -hmm. I've found to be a, a really wonderful sort of, you know, unfolding of the way that my life has um, mm -hmm. sort of gone. Um, when you sort of at 18 decided that you wanted to be an artist and, and you spent those five years working in drama, um, did you have yeah. the support of your family? You mentioned early on that they, you know, kind no. of... <laughs> 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 no, in fact, in fact, the, the crazy thing is that my father was an actor. Oh, and wow. Yeah, that's a crazy one because we had a discussion, you know, and why do you, you know, you're so hard on me. You don't want me to be an artist and you were one, you know, you decided to quit, but I don't have to quit, you know, that's your choice, not mine, but whatever. And, um, uh, sorry, repeat the question. Because yeah, I was saying, I was just wondering I mean, what type of support you had from your family at the time because they yeah, were trying yeah. to encourage you to not do <laughs> what you ended up doing. Until, until this, they saw an actual film, film of mine that got into some exhibitions, that went pretty well, you know. Mm -hmm. But you have to... The thing is, this system, it's like pushing you to take decisions before you really realize what you want to do. Ooh, that's crazy yeah. because it, it's that's the problem. And that's, that, that, that's making us um, taking more time to decide, you know, because the pressure doesn't allow you to really inside yourself, get inside yourself and decide and discover what who you are, what do you want to do. So um, I took my time. I took my time from 18 to 20, whatever. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to, to, you know, any universities that you're telling me. I'm pretty sorry. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to head up with my camera. I'm going to go out, you know, and, and, and search for things. Even if, if I'm going to be poor for uh, some years. That doesn't matter. And that I'm so glad I did it because with time, you realize that the, the sensibility you have to have for, you, for, for to make art, you know, to make good art, in fact, uh, it's pretty, you know, uh, sensitive. <laughs> so, so you have to take care about that. You know, I've, I've seen many, many artists, successful artists that lost that thing, you know, and even asking me what to do. So, and that's because they were too aimed into success, you mm. know. So art is a long path. It's a, it's a long-term path. You, you really have to take your time and, you know, and, and protect yourself and protect yourself from that to, 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 to still have that spark, you know, oh. have that spark and don't lose that spark. Gina, I think you said something which is so crucially important because there is a, 
you know, 10 year period from like 18 to 28 of my life where everything I was doing felt like it was out of my own control. Right. It was, I needed Mm -hmm. to get this job and go to this college and get this degree and do this and do that and do this and do that. And never Mm -hmm. in any of this time was I ever like given or afforded the opportunity to stop and say, Hey, what the fuck am I doing? Am I happy? Like, do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? No, it was like more what society had told me that I needed to do. And it wasn't until losing my job in the pandemic where, you know, the whole world Mm -hmm. is shutting down around me and there's nothing to do that I was able to sort of look inside and be like, what, what makes you happy? Like, what do you want to do? And it's, it's so, so unfortunate that so many people discover later in life, the things that make them happy because we're on this merry-go-round where we're, mm-hmm. we need to be here by this age and here by that age and this by this age. And it's never like, well, where do you want to be at 25 or 30 or 50 or 60? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of life is preplanned to a date in the future when that's you right. can stop working. But like, that's no way to live a life. I think that's an, inc- no, no, no. an incredibly important thing that you said that, I, you know, I think gets lost on a lot of people. Um You've but heard. this, this sorry to interrupt, but this gener- generation, the, the one that you mentioned, because we had the pandemic and many things going on around the world, we are realizing that. Mm-hmm. We are changing that. We are, you know, raising kids, trying to let them be uh, as, as free as possible to decide. Yeah, go on, please. I was just say, um, growing up in South America, I probably had its own unique challenges and, and also benefits. Um, Give me sort of an idea of what it was like being in yes. your 20s trying to chase an artistic dream um, and, and sort of yes. like the, the, the highs and the lows of what that pattern has That's looked like. That's pretty important. Great questions, John. Having a great time here. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> um, yes, South America has this problem. There's lots of poverty, real, really. So if you have a good situation, you're pretty lucky, you know. And so it's pretty difficult to go and do art without, you know, realizing that your art has to uh, reflect that situation in some in some way. You know, it's not that you just have to do social art, but if you are sensible and sensitive, yes, that's going to, you know, you're going to have a shock around it. You know, that's the the, 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 the the hard part around art. But the beautiful part around it is the cultures, because you have many original cultures around our countries, you know, and, and they are pretty artistic in, in a practical and a way, you know, and an everyday's choice. And so it's a mixture between those uh, poles, if you wish. So when I was 24, I was, you know, handling a, a Nikon F2 1975 with my 30 millimeter, uh, 35 millimeter rig. Was thinking, what do I do? Okay, I don't know. So I was deciding in every corner where to go, left or right. Okay, that that was the experiment. So it was like left and right, then left and right. And I found a group of kids working on the streets, cleaning carts, windows, windshields, when, when they stopped at the, you know, at the, at the corners. Mm-hmm. And I sat down there and uh, the old one was like 13 years old. So you had like five, six, seven-year-old kids there working on the street. And I sat down with my with my camera preparing, you know, to, to take some shoots. And immediately they went around me and we were like friends in an instant. Mm. And I was taking pictures. I have those on the NFTs also. They went pretty well. And we got so... so so good like that that was a so good relationship that i i i went to their their school they went i i was there like teaching photography for them and their college 
So it was a pretty interesting situation, but you have to allow yourself to live like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was cleaning also the windshields and I was making some money with them <laughs> on the street, you know? And then we went to, to a store and we bought uh, a roll of film and we continued shooting the situation. And before that first week, one day, the police came in front of me and took them by surprise, you know, pretty aggressively. And they were asking me, you want to come? You want to come? It was a pretty hard situation. They disappeared in front of me forever. I, I never saw them again. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Latin America has, Latin America has those situations that really moves you to, to be more inclusive in, in a way, you know, tolerant and, and inclusive in a way. And, and, and yes, it's, it's as, as you said, it's tough, but at the same time, it's encouraging, you know, it, it's, it's, in, it's making you include more realities around your, your existence. It's not just you, 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 and you. Mm. That, that's a good part of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I unfortunately, I, I mean, well, fortunately, I don't have relatable instances like that in my life, right? Like, I can't, mm -hmm. you know, I can say, wow, that's so hard and wow, that's so tragic, but I can't relate to that. I don't have that life experience. Um, I'm super mm -hmm. curious how an, an experience like that shapes your art making, right? Like, that was probably somewhat of a traumatic right. experience to see these kids who you spent a number of days with out on the streets, photographing, working with disappear mm -hmm. like how what does that do to you as you know a human being as gino the artist yeah that's pretty hard because uh, you know when you are realized that that this happens around you and uh, you just can't uh, turn off that, that thoughts so the way to overcome those is include the, these situations in your art mm -hmm. that's the only way to do it so a huge part of my work does resemble these social aspects that have to be seen, in fact. And, you know, I, I try to recover anonymous and peripheric stories, not just on photography, but also on film. And that went pretty well, in fact, because... I have an I had an experience, a pretty tough experience. One of my friends, my closest friends from my 30s, when I was your age, he he's a, an actor, and he has he had an, an argue with the, their colleagues, and and he was living with with them, so he went to the street because you know he had to leave the, the the situation and he went living on the streets and it was pretty hard also for me because he's so sensitive and so creative and that experience you know i was thinking man this guy is gonna you know take his life any <laughs> any day so the way that we overcome that situation is i i was like Walking with him from from quite a time to you know uh, being a companion and and we started to record a, a, with a mic because I I'm, I'm also uh, interested in sound and I studied sound engineer engineering and so I have my my own uh, studio and he came to my studio every day and we were making like this um thing around self hypnosis self hypnosis and closing his eyes and and you know deriving and fabulating around his own life in the street and man if you hear those recordings you're gonna throw a couple of tears for sure you know it's pretty incredible so in we we kind of save his life Wow. doing this and and one day i was in a meeting with a famous director from ecuador and he's pretty famous and he was telling us well i came here to argentina because i want to uh, you know document the social situation in argentina whatever so i told him i got your movie 
It's about a guy that's on the streets that's a pretty good art, artist and actor. And he, in fact, he's pretty good. So I had the vision that he was on uh, a park uh, laying down on a bank. And because I didn't know where he was really, uh, I stopped seeing him for a while. Mm-hmm. And he, this director tells me, okay, let's do the movie. Let's find the guy. Like, we went to that park and he was there sitting on that and on that. Yeah, it was pretty incredible because it was like a vision. And he was sleeping, laying down in this bank. And I woke him up. Man, woke up, Victor. We are going to make a movie about, uh, about your life, bro. Really? Yeah, yeah. The director is here. And we, 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 he woke up, we went to that car, and, um, and that was a beautiful experience because that documentary won a prize by Marcelino Botin. Wow. And, yeah, it went to Tribeca. Wow. Tribeca, yeah, yeah. And it got pretty famous short and, and went, you know, to many countries around the world. Switzerland, Germany, France, Latin America, etc. And then the crazy thing about this story is that Victor was showcased in the Cannes Festival because he he yes he, he did a feature as the main character for a, a movie, pretty well known movie. It's uh, Muere Monstro, Muere Die. A monster die, and it's an horror movie, and he's the la- the main act, the character. And I've seen Kate Blanchett, you know, hugging him and crying when she saw wow. that movie. Yeah, <laughs> so wow. that's a pretty great, you know, example of what the what the power of art can do to your life yeah. if you re- if you realize that art is actually living in by itself it's not just the 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 technical aspect yeah. that we are seeing there's something behind what we are doing what when we are doing art yeah i think i think that's beautiful gino um i'm so like i i, I would classify you as like a storyteller right so whether you're telling you know, a story via a documentary, via sound, via film, via photos, um, you're out to like depict the human experience. Um, and it, it, it's irrelevant necessarily what the medium is. You're, you're out to tell a story. Um, do you look at like a a particular subject, a particular matter, and do you see it in your head as whether this would make a better photograph than a film? This would make a better, um, you know, short clip versus a, a stagnant image. Like, how does your process sort of evolve from idea to execution to you know finalizing the the, the image or the or the story? Thanks for the question. It's it's beautiful. Uh, yes, it, for me, it's like uh, an exercise for intuition. So I don't rely on scripts. I don't rely on preconceived thoughts. I just get impressions of what I should be doing. So the impressions come and they are remanent, so they don't go out. Go out. They, they stay for a couple of days or weeks and, you know, insisting, just, you know, it's like something that doesn't go. Uh, and and then I do realize that I have to do something around it. And then the, the, the process starts. So I'm, I really respect that relationship I have with art, not trying to force things. Even when I do commercial things, I don't do 45 takes of things. And I don't do, you know, I don't put five lights I try to work with natural lights. Mm -hmm. I try to work with the spontaneous aspect and creativity from the actors. I let them do their thing and, you know, encourage, in fact, to bring out more of their their own creativity, their own creative process. Mm -hmm. Also from, from musicians, 
As an example, we are doing right now a short film with Ernesto Cisneros. He's a great musician from Cuba. And in the experiment around this series of shorts is, you know, Ernesto, you do the music just with the concept without seeing any edits or stills or whatever. And I'm gonna edit myself the material without hearing any music. Let's do it for the same period of time. You know, say this is an example, shirts are from uh, of two minutes. So we are making pieces, he's doing his piece for two minutes and, and I do my own. And then we put that all together it, and it goes beautifully. It's perfect. You have, you have the cuts, you have things, you have the rhythm, you have everything. Because when you base yourself, and I, I learned this from Gilles Deleuze in the Image Time thesis that I recommend a lot. It's a beautiful book, Image Time. And you know, Audio and visuals don't have to rely on the other really to make art. You, if you allow the individual things to just search for the, their own uh, glory, if you wish, the, the encounter will happen. The, the, the between the two will happen. Of course, you can then just adjust some things but if you do that from the start, you're not losing lots of things that you even cannot think. Because as Jill says, there's some unthinkable uh, thing on thoughts. We cannot think about everything that's happening because we have a point of view in this universe and that's limited. So... As Bergson says, intuition, it's a way to understand the essence of things because reasoning is like going around the thing, but when you intuit something, you are the thing for an instant. You become the thing for an instant. Even if you don't know what's around it, you can feel what it is. You can understand the, the, the essence of it. And that's a power that's a powerful thing for artists because if you resemble that power you will you evolve that in many aspects and you have many many ways to evolve that sensations and, and i prefer that method around uh, instead of you know thinking 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 and trying to control things while you shoot, while you direct, while you make your photographies, because if you adapt to the situations, and that's kind of depersonalization aspect of art, you know, forget about your ego. Things are going to be there around, uh, even if you don't try to control them, of course they are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's better if you try to discover things other than inventing things, you know? Oh, absolutely. I think that's a crucially important perspective on art. Um, it's very easy to get wrapped up in the ego of things, like comparing yourself and your journey to someone else's success and failures and such. Um, I think it's just a wonderful uh, example of how art brings people together because you and I literally met on Twitter talking about NFTs mm -hmm. and, and photo photography. Right. And I think that's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious what your journey has been like in the NFT space. Um, there's, there's an image of yours uh, that was like a woman um, and a mountain. I believe it was a double exposure that you took, um, which I'm assuming was taken on film. Yes. Yeah. Two that, takes on film. Yeah. It, it's just such a it's uh, god i don't even know how to describe it. it's beautiful it's powerful there is uh an ethereal uh power to the image that i i just was like really struck by um when we were like talking you know many weeks ago um t talk to me about what your process has been like um you know evolving in this new web3 space um and if you're having successes like talk to me about how that's impacted your ability to continue to create and uh, what that process has been like for you 
It's funny because that take that you're talking about sold yesterday. Oh, wow. Congrats. And yeah, thanks. Mentally is the great, you know, it's my friend. In fact, I, it's a great collector from the NFTs, but we, we are just chatting and knowing each other. He's a, such a great and interesting guy. And yes, uh, he saw that. And there were like five editions of that photograph. And I did that on purposely because I don't want to see much editions. And he told me, just burn the rest, uh, put one with the whole price and I will buy it. Wow. And he did, he did it yesterday. Yes, that's a beautiful thing that I'm trying to, I'm, I discovered a couple of years ago. What I do really is to, Layer two negatives inside the enlarger. So I take two different roles, one with the subject, the other one with the, you know, the um, situation around. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is, again, I don't try to control things. So I'm really searching for the unexpected. And that's mo more surprising it's like you become as an expectator of your own art and you know it's beautiful because the process is more engaging it's like you're a kid again you want you're discovering things and you're not the master of photography you know mm -hmm. again so this thing is i uh, i search for the situation uh, in both uh, roles and then in the lab here in the dark room, I start layering and looking at the relationships between them, you know, it, and, you know, magic happens. In this situation that you were telling, you know, her dress was, in fact, in line with the mountains. When I put it, when I, in that magical moment, when you put both negatives and put some light uh, uh, in the back part to see what, what's happening between them, it's magical because you move one millimeter and you find that lines encountering. When you use uh, the, you know, the, oh, I don't know how to say it in English, but the aureal, mathematics of you know composition mm -hmm. when when you do that you're going to find that most of your photographs do have encounters between them because you're searching for you know those points and when you put them all together oh yeah that mountain was there and now it's going to be here so that's the way that i'm doing that that series it's beautiful um, and 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 it's like different because if you do two shots in the same negative, something happens with the 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 emulsion. It lost some some kind of contrast. Mm -hmm. But if you do the contrast equally on both on different negatives, then in the encounter it goes beautifully and it has the, a beautiful contrast. I prefer to do that. That's really cool. I would have assumed that it was taken on the same film right like Many on the people same, does. yeah yeah um i think that's a pretty genius way to make much clearer and obviously visually uh appealing double double uh, exposures that's because right. both images maintain all of their complexities um individually the, the range. Then, yeah the range yeah yeah that's really cool well congratulations on your sale um that's so funny Thank that you. it was yesterday um so yes. what what has the web3 space taught you about your art and what is the web3 space um for you in terms of being able to further your career so when i first came to the nft space i met judy lindsay i don't know if you know her it's a great uh, photographer follow her I, i'm gonna dm you the, her, okay. her user mm -hmm. he, she was one of the first people to to sell nfts and uh, photography nfts and she sold actually a photograph from 1000 ETH. holy shit. yeah <laughs> Yes, when when of course it wasn't on this price, right? And it was like a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and and she was so delightful. It was when I, you know, I was afraid because I'm pretty like introvert around social 
you know, artistic social circles, you know. So I was like, mm, what's this going to be like, you know, and more people to see. I'm not on that. I'm not that much on social media also. So, but Judy, it was a light, you know. She immediately realized the, the, the intention behind my work. Uh, she put me on the spot, actually, and I get, I get, I got to know many, many artists uh, from the NFT photography world. So they, they, they weren't many spaces in, Sp in Spanish, and I start, I started making spaces in Spanish for the Latin community, mm -hmm. and I found my best friends as for today. Those are Zelda Jara, Sacoli, Ernesto Cisneros, Avingro, where many of them, I couldn't name them at all. At all. And, and, you know, that's the best part of it. Oh, yeah. Because you are so alone mm. as artists. We are pretty depressed people. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's hard to, to, to be an artist in this crazy world. <laughs> so and this, it, this was like, okay. I'm an artist. I can, you know, wake up every day, e even if I don't sell, I'm still an artist. Yeah. So I got my friends, I got my partners, whatever. They know what we are doing. That's beautiful because you do a photograph on the lab, you, you know, develop the thing, you put it up and your friends were, oh yeah, man, that was beautiful, whatever. And that's new for me. Yeah, really. I was I was waiting. I'm in social media since the start of the Internet, when we have those modems, had those <laughs> modems, you know, and I, I was on many BBS bulletin board system and things, but I never had this bunch of artists hanging up with me. Yeah, I First think time. I was going to uh, the for me, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm only two years into my photography journey. Um were it not for this community of artists that I've been able to befriend online and bounce ideas off of, tell me if this is good, if this is bad, uh, you know, sharing right. common stories of uh, both positives and negatives in the experience of being an artist, I don't think I could be doing what I'm doing today. It's, it is this relationship of, uh, and community that I've been able to find that's been able to be like my biggest source of inspiration in terms of wanting to get out and continue exactly. to create. Um, what, what inspires you to create art? Obviously you've been doing it for a long time now. This is your life. It's your life's work. So what inspires you to continue to create? To be different, to be in a different path, you know, uh, when I was a kid and I had to, you know, choose for a career or whatever, I was heading the streets and I was, man, why is all this noise, man? You know, you're hearing my noises here in my home, you know, from the buses coming and going and, you know, I don't want to do this to the world. So my main inspiration is to be off the grid, if you wish to say it like that way. I don't want to be in that situation anymore, you know. Even I have to, I prefer to, you know, plant my own things, like my tomatoes or whatever, uh, you know, to survive and be uh, as independent as possible you know that's the main thing and and my partner because i am married with an artist also she's a designer pretty successful designer and she's on the same path like we we struggled so many years to to live from our art but now that we do we are so happy because we ju we are just using the car when we do have to go uh, you know, to a place in nature or anything that we do have to do. Uh, otherwise, we're just living and, and not pretending anymore hmm. than that. That's a main inspiration. Of course, I'm, I'm looking, always looking for new themes to, to, to go. As an example, we are heading for a documentary um, around Latin America uh, about NFTs, because I have many friends in different countries, and we said, okay, I'm gonna. I have my partner 
in Ecuador, we do have a red camera with a Snyder lenses and a beautiful equipment to a cinematographic, a digital cinema equipment. And we were thinking, in fact, Sebastian, the, the owner of this camera doesn't rent it for commercial things. He wants to use it just for cultural matters. Awesome. So, Yeah, that's so, there's some crazy people. I love I love these kind of people in this world, you know. It's uncommon. And and I told him, would you lend me the camera to go to eight countries and shoot the the existence around the NFT artists because it's a revolution in Latin America. Many people are leaving from it that weren't selling anything before mm -hmm. that. And we want to document that stories and also, of course, the beautiful landscapes of Latin America in every country. And, and this is a new inspiration, you know, because inspirations come in a way of defying yourself. For me, it's like, you know, this is a new thing that we should be doing. So let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. And that's all. Not, not I don't have many pre preconceived paths in 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 my life. I love that. Um, I, I mean, it, you you're there. There's an immense uh, intentionality um, behind both of your work and your words that I find my, just wildly refreshing for me because. Thank you're, you. I'm glad that. Yes. Just that. You're you're welcome. I, it, it it's nice for me because it is proof that you can live an artistic life and be fulfilled and it doesn't necessarily have to be um, via checking X number of boxes on a bucket list that someone uh, decided, you know, when we're 18. Just doing sort of like a QA. and a um, Some of the questions are super easy. Okay. Some of them are a little bit more in depth. Um, but my first question Perfect. for you is, are you happy? Yes, I am. Thankfully. Good. Thankfully, I am. You, you've had a career that spanned a number of genres, a number of mediums, and uh, yes. a ton of success. Um, if you had to look at the next chapter of what your career looks like, what is your biggest dream? Oh, my biggest dream is to help more people, uh, more artists, and become a collector and try to help more people that really need to, you know, get along with art and they want to and, you know, rescue their sensibility. Mm, I love that. Um, I, I'm a person who, on a daily basis, the confidence that I have in my ability to create goes up and, <laughs> goes up and down. Um, what gives you yes. confidence? Well, that's a tough question. I don't know, really. It's, it's like a survival thing. What makes me encouraging to, to when I'm depressed It's, it's like, well, this is short, you know, life is really short. We're just a spark in the middle of the universe. So if, even if I don't know what to do, being here is enough. Hmm. So I'm trying not to be that hard on me because, you know, we do have w w days and days. So let the time pass and that's going to heal everything. Don't be that you know uh, hard on you and that's what i'm trying to do not being hard on me just be here that's beautiful um speaking of sparks do you believe in an afterlife yes i do yes i do and uh, before also because you know c continuity in this universe is pretty obvious mm -hmm. you know I, I you can't you can't stop this Yeah, you I, can't stop this. I agree. Um, what's your favorite book? My favorite book is yeah, should be. Oh my God, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, it should be yeah, the the much time that I mentioned before from Jill Deleuze. Okay, what's your favorite movie? Oh, my favorite movie. That's a hard one. I have two of them. That's okay. But I, I I'm gonna recommend you one of them and i can't pronounce the director because she's a, a polish director and it's a pretty hard but just them is the name 
is existence, the, uh, the, the significance, the, the, the meaning around that just them with J. And the other one would be a self-portrait of December from Jean-Luc Godard. That changed my life. It's a it's a picture. It's a it's a movie that doesn't have any copies more than the original ones. I think there are 10 uh, 35 millimeter copies that are you know traveling around the world. And I got the chance to so, so I saw one of those copies in Ecuador and and Jean Luc Godard self portrait of December is a very very touching movie for any artist wow yeah. that's that's awesome um what yeah. what's your uh, what's your favorite food well it could be like seafood because my my you know when i was a kid i lived in ecuador in in the in the shores and, and around the sea so for me it's like seafood mm -hmm. if you wish um what are you most proud of Oh my God, I'm proud of artists, really, and true artists. I'm proud of, of, of what they, they can do. They can do pretty hard things, pretty hard things, just to get along with art. Yeah, I'm proud about artists, in fact. I love that. Um, what's the best piece of advice someone has ever given you? Don't be hard on you. Don't be so hard on you. Don't 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 be that because we want to succeed so hard. That's so bad to do because we don't know why why we are here. No one knows why we are here. No one knows. So uh, don't be hard on you at all. Just let yourself be. Yeah. That would be the best advice. My, one of mine is uh, stop worrying about the wreckage of the future. A lot of times, especially we as artists, are so focused intently on what may or may not transpire beyond the exactly. moment that we're in, um, that it can be a debilitating and a... You can think of the future, you can you can search for the future, of course, that's totally, impossible yeah. not to do so, but don't try to control the future, that's not, that's not going to do well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, my last question is, give me a recommendation yes. for something that you've recently consumed. It can be a book you read, a podcast, a TV show, a movie, mm -hmm. just something that you've recently consumed yes. that you'd like everyone to check out. Great question. Uh, I would say Henry Bergson. Bergson uh, would be... Uh, he's a French philosopher, an old one. Mm -hmm. He has introduction to metaphysics. Yep. He has many papers around. And, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, for everyone's philosophy. It's not hard to do. It's a pretty delightful writing. And it does so well with artists, you know. It, it's a companion. Mm -hmm. It's really a companion for artists. If you're struggling on, on what to do or what to think, grab any Bergson's book and you will be on your path again. Hmm. I love that. Um, yeah. Gino, uh, I'm, I'm immensely appreciative of your time today. I, uh, I can't, I mean, that was the quickest hour I think I've done on this podcast in quite some time. <laughs> uh, it was just uh, incredibly wonderful and, and joyful for me to have this conversation with you. Um, you're an incredibly thoughtful and intentional per person. And the fact that you chose to spend an hour of your day speaking with me for this podcast means a lot to me. Um, I have a very cheesy line. Uh, if, if you've been on my podcast, you're part of my family. Um, so welcome. And uh, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. No, no, it's my pleasure, John. You're, 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 you know, delightful questions. And it's like, um, yeah, it was a meeting that was um, you know, going on a spark. Yeah, um, and thank you. I'm going to follow your, your podcast more. And, you know, let's get in touch. Everyone can just DM me and be in touch. No worries at all if you have anything to share or just need some advices for the nfts whatever john just don't hesitate to reach me again okay it's a pleasure to have my my pleasure as well take care yeah